How's it going? Yeah, you talked to Greg? Yeah, you're Mark? Yep. Yeah, I have a um, look around. I mean, I got tons of boxes to go through. How many followers you guys got on YouTube? <laughs> a couple. Oh, okay. uh, almost 2,000. Wow. Got a, got, a good, got a good amount. We're growing every week. Yeah. Um, yeah, start going Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. I, I mean, I got uh, plenty of boxes over here, too, with them. There's all a mixture of stuff. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks. So guys, we're going through the first couple boxes here at Mark's store, and uh, right away, you know, I noticed some pretty good titles, and I'm like, you know what, there's actually some potential here, like, he actually has a decent selection of stuff. Um, some of these books were a little pricey, um, a lot of them that I'm putting back were kind of $5 and up, there wasn't really anything under $5 in any of these boxes, so that was kind of like the bottom. Um... Which, I mean, if there were more 2 or $3 books, maybe would have grabbed more. But, like, this one, I believe, was a $10 book, so I put that back. Um, but, yeah, just going through it, and Mark just letting us know that he's got a lot of boxes for us to go through. So I'm like, all right, let me start making a pile now of anything that I kind of like, and we'll take it from there. Sure thing. I don't know. I guess he's still held up, yeah. They have a lot of nice stuff there. So it's as I'm going through this box that it, it becomes apparent that this guy has a pretty decent Silver Age uh, selection that'll be a theme throughout the rest of this video. Prices are a little high on the Silver Age books. They're kind of, you know, 25 bucks and up on a lot of them, which just doesn't work for me um, for what I'm trying to do with them. But like this Journey into Mystery, I find for 15. The, this uh, Thor comic, nice Destroyer cover, I find for 20. So there, there's deals to be found in here, and especially if we can bundle, you know, which is what I'm going to ask if we can get any kind of bundle price together. But now the game is, you know, what else is this guy going to pull out of these boxes? We're just we buy pretty much anything uh, bronze, silver. Um, doesn't have to be keys. We always look for keys, obviously. In a dollar box. We like uh, cartoon comics, also Disney stuff, okay, all kind of stuff like that. That stuff from like the fifties and the forties. Uh huh. Yeah. You got. I mean, you got a lot of nice stuff just from what we're looking at right now. Oh, that's nothing. <laughs> that's actually like, like junk. Really? Yeah. Okay. No, I mean I have like. 
Strange Tale, like pre uh, Doctor Strange, Strange Tale, that uh, pre Spider Man Amazing Fantasy. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I, I've gotten a few uh, Golden Age collections in this year with uh, Justice League number one through a hundred. I had. Really? Yeah, but I mean, wow. that stuff sells like the first day. Yeah, day. absolutely. Absolutely. I'm guessing you do a lot of online sales also. No. no? no really? Really? All out of store? I have 300 followers on Instagram. That's so it's all coming out of the store, huh? That's pretty impressive. Yeah, I do like the flea markets and stuff. Okay. I mean, I want to build because, like, now I'm starting to take in so much stuff that I want to build more online, but it's like, uh -huh. yeah, computers have never been my stuff. <laughs> Which flea market? Uh, Collinswood. Collinswood has a big They're really bad for, like, anything except for, like, a, I don't know. It's, it's, I never buy anything down there. I walk around there looking for stuff. Yeah, toys are good. Toys are good. Toys are good. Toys are Toys are good. Toys are good. Toys are good. Toys are good. Everybody always says they come down to see them. Sure they probably do that. Yeah, well, I sell to most of the vendors down there. Right. So most of the vendors are buying it from me anyway. So I'd rather off just going here. And if we if we made like a nice stack, would you be able to work with us on oh, the definitely. sticker price? One hundred percent. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I always work with people. The more money you spend, the cheaper it gets. Cool. Right. That was in there. Oh wow. Wow, that's a nice one. That was in there. I have two. I love those early Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Then also I have um I have a few other Ninja Turtle ones too somewhat. They're like in the one box over there. Uh-huh. So I have like the Christmas issue, the first Christmas issue thing. And yeah, the, I, I gotta go through the rest of this clock. Pretty good for uh comics though this year. Oh yeah, it's been great. Last year I had the first hundred player match come in. Really? Hundred, yeah. I like mean, like I'm, all issues, like one through a hundred? Yeah. Wow. Yep. That's a gold mine. I know. <laughs> I had a problem was I handed it over to somebody and I just kinda was like, hey, here, scratch my back door down the road and then yeah. Yeah, it looks like um I mean, it looks like everything's kind of starting to cool down a little bit, but you, the, you know what? If you have the nice, like, wall books, that's the best thing to have right now. That's, no that's protection. That kind of that's where I myself on. Every other place has a brand new issue that come out. Mm -hmm. That's not, it's not, that's not going to hold up in this uh, upcoming economy. No. But I mean, the, even uh, this stuff is starting to drop down a It's starting bit. to drop. It's just, it's, it's good to have it. the prices are strong. Yeah, it's hard. It's just, they're just hard to get. So, look, guys, um... You know, hundreds of books later, <laughs> we're still going through a bunch of stuff. And, um, like, right there, I pull out a Spider-Man, um, a Marvel team-up Spider-Man Werewolf by Night. And I start thinking to myself, you know, uh, if we can get a pretty good pile together, we might be able to get a good bulk deal. And the, the scary part for me, as I was going through some of this stuff, was that a lot of it wasn't priced. Um, a lot of the stuff that we went through in the beginning that he already had out, he had all those books priced. He had all his wall books priced and everything like that. But as he starts pulling out boxes, uh, it just must be, be stuff that he didn't get to yet. He said that he recently got a collection in of a lot of bronze and silver stuff. And so this is probably a lot of stuff that he did not. Uh, he probably didn't price yet. So that's good for me because you guys know what I like to do on my channel is if I see a guy who has a bunch of priced books and he has one that's not priced, that's usually the one I could target and maybe get a little bit of a deal on. But at the same time, because he doesn't have these books priced, you know, I don't know what he's thinking on them. And, and you know, we're, we're in his store, um, and I'm pulling out a lot of books. So if he's asking, uh, I'm getting nervous with Dad. I'm like, if he's asking 10 or 15 or 20 bucks a piece on some of these books, you know, we're not going to be able to get a deal done on a lot of this stuff. But uh, for now, basically the strategy is if I like it and it doesn't have a price on it, I'm pulling it out just to see if I can get it for a, a bundle deal. And if I like it and the price is too high, I'm, I might still pull it out and just see if he can work with me on it.
Now we get into this box, and you know, I I start to see stuff that I really really like, like uh, Bronze Age Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, we have seen a lot of bronze books uh, so far at this store, uh, a lot of bronze books with Spider-Man in it, but. It's in this box that I start pulling out actually Amazing Spider-Mans. And you can see he has a lot of other titles. Um, I hope you guys don't hate me. I definitely 100% right there passed over. Uh, I think that's the first Spider-Hulk. Uh, I didn't even think to pull that out because I just watched a video on that book um, recently, like before I went to the store. So I wasn't even a, a paying attention to that book. So I don't know if that was a... a I don't know how valuable that book actually is, but I I am upset that I passed over it. But anyway, um, starting to see some really cool stuff, obviously. And um, right here in this section, you know, we get a whole bunch of Amazing Spider-Man books uh, right here too. Uh, you know, one sixty-two, one sixty-three, and a Tarantula book. Uh, just really cool stuff. And once again, the stuff is not priced, so it it's like, yeah, these are really good books. Um, this is stuff that I really like. This is in my wheelhouse of collectibles. I really want to buy these. At the same time, guys, I'm not paying. You know, I'm not paying ten bucks a piece on on these books, and uh, I don't know what he's asking for them. So it's kind of scary. It's like uh, you know, I don't, I don't know if we're going to be able to get a deal done on this stuff, but I'm just going to keep pulling them out anyway. And then I even end up pulling out a key here, first appearance tarantula. So really cool stuff. And I just keep digging, and I just keep finding really cool books uh, time and time again. Is the whole picture? Yep. That's it. Subscribe to you. Awesome. What's your name? My name's Ryan. Ryan. I like to do comic books, uh, Pokemon cards, baseball cards. Oh, awesome, awesome. Yeah. Chris, nice, nice to meet nice you. To meet you. Yeah. Thank you for subscribing. Really appreciate that. And just so you guys know, the reason I am narrating much of this video is because there was a lot of background music going on. He had the radio on. And I wasn't about to walk into this guy's store. So This is the first time I'm meeting the guy. So I'm not going to walk into his store and just uh, ask him if he can turn the music off so I can make uh, uh, my YouTube video for my channel. Uh, but afterwards, I was explaining to him because, you know, the guy Mark had a lot of questions about YouTube and uh, he's thinking about starting his own channel. And... I just let him know, like, you know, yeah, you know, the video is going to be easy. It's going to be fun and everything like that. It's not a lot of work. It's just the background music is going to make it a little tough. And he was apologetic. And I was like, don't worry about it because, you know what, the next time I come back here, which there will be a next time, uh, we'll just, we'll turn the music off and um, it'll, it'll make it a lot easier. But other than that, you know, uh, this was a super fun video to make. Uh, so not, not a whole lot of complaints on that end. You could see as we're going through this box, I mean, it, you could just pull out anything, like, uh, out of nowhere, we just find a Silver Age uh, uh, Thor book, and that's when I see this this book in the box here, The Amazing Spider-Man. You know, you can kind of see it. I think it's, what, Amazing Spider-Man 265? Uh, black Suit, First Appearance, Silver Sable. I'm telling you that now after I researched it, because I did not know that when I bought it, but I was like, this is a really cool book, so I'm going to grab it. Once again, not a price on it, so if I like it, it's going into the it's going into the pile. And so we dig on, and the boxes just keep coming, guys. The comics just keep coming. Um, and we start to find, you know, just more and more really cool stuff. Here's a really nice Thor book. You know, that's that's somebody's wall book. And then we start pulling out this Silver Age Fantastic Four. And, like, right here we pull out um, Fantastic Four 67. You know, that's a big key. And for a lot of guys, for a lot of comic book shops, this book is on their wall. And this guy just has it in a long box with a bunch of other uh, really big keys. Uh, that's how I would sum up this store is that there's not enough wall space for the amount of keys that this guy has. Uh, it's it's an amazing inventory of stuff. And, um, you know, he can't, he can't do the books. He would need... 
you know, two stores uh, to, to do his wall books justice. Um, he just has so much stuff. It's it's really amazing, all the books that he has in here. Um, so once again, these books are in price. We're pulling them out and uh, just seeing uh, if we could uh, do a deal on it. Decided to do instead of naughty by nature, it's criminal by nature. Okay, interesting. But then this was the big one. This one I just got yesterday. Almost the whole collection. Wow. Instead of uh, Nas Illimatic. That's awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, I've had like Hulk 181, 182, 180. Uh, I've had um, I had a giant size X Men 9.0. That's what I really want. I've never had. We never had one. I really want one of those. Four of them. That's At awesome. At one time here. That's awesome. I had a coverless one that I sold for like 500 bucks, but I mean, it, it was. It looked like it'd be like an eight. Mm -hmm. It was Absolutely. such a shame that I had no cover. I did. Yeah, you know, this place like walking back in time. Now. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's all you have an amazing store. So cool. You know, um, I've always been a flea market kid since I was like 10 years old, always going to flea markets, buying weird stuff. Um, I love the TV shows. I love Storage Wars. I love American Pickers. I love Pawn Stars. I was going to go Pawn Stars out of here. And that, would, that would be cool. I set up as a, as a seller at the flea market. Guy came by with a GoPro on like this. And he was just explaining to me, yeah, I just do this, I do this. And I saw he was having like some success with it. I was like, you know, I think I could do that. Like, it doesn't seem like that hard. But yeah. I don't know anything about computers or anything like you. Like, you know, I don't know anything. That's no so I'm kind of doing this whole thing as like a learning experience. But it's been 2, awesome. Followers, 2,000 Yeah, I mean, it's, it's awesome. People are really, really interested. A little bit. A little bit. It's like every video is generating a couple bucks here and there. But people, I, I'm surprised people want to see it because I was, I was like, I didn't think anybody was gonna to want to see me go to the flea market, but it was like people want to see it. Yeah. And it's like somebody well, sure, said that to me the one day. They're like, why don't you do YouTube? And I was like, I hate my voice. And <laughs> I feel the same way. I'm like, who would watch? Who would watch it? Exactly. I'm telling you, man, just do it because it, you know what? It, it may pay. It might pay off. It yeah. might just pay. It might well, just be worth it to do it. I should do a Pawn Stars out of here, and of course that was like the month before. Like I got like the Amazing Spider-Man collection, mm -hmm. and I was like, man, I should have really. I, I have videos of it, kind of like I recorded like flipping through all the books and everything. But it's mm -hmm. I mean, now that I do it, my only regret is not doing it sooner. Yeah, that's it. So, but honestly, just wearing it around, it, it's not bad. I know they made a copy of this. I'm good, thank you. No, I'm good, thank you. It's nice, it's rough. Anybody want water? I have one, thank you. Mike, you want one? Yeah, it's a book. We have a couple of copies for that. This is the number one. Don't have it. The artist. That was another big question I got, and it was all these love things. The, the time to love. Time to love. <laughs> right. Some of those sell for big bucks, though. I was surprised. Did you get like the early 50s ones? Yeah, that's true. But I mean, for the most part, yeah, they're garbage. Man, man. Yeah. 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 I have some, I have Mickey Mantle's rookie yearbook. 1951 <laughs> rookie yearbook. I have the first, uh, Jackie Robinson's first cover, which was first Black Man on Sporting Magazine. Oh my god, I love that monster of the Godzilla monster yeah, book. That's it. sick. <laughs> it was originally called the Bionic Monster. It's pretty crazy. That is so cool. It's 1974, probably. 
Oh, he's got first Wonder Man. Yeah. I didn't even see half of these. Jesus. That's the 51 year book. That's Mickey Mantle's rookie year. Oh my god. Oh wow. That was the year before Star Wars came out. Wow. And this was the year before Star Wars came out. No, this one was. Yeah. Yeah. They were still guessing what it was going to be like. Yeah. Who would have thought? It's crazy. All right, so let's uh, let's talk business here. So we have it broken up as these are all the dollar books here. I'll okay. kind of leave that to the side. Um, we were thinking this stack and this stack, a lot of this stuff you don't have priced, so yeah. I'm not trying to give you an insulting offer. I'm just trying to let you know yep. where I got to be on it. For these two stacks here, we were looking at 300 bucks. Just let us know what you're thinking on that. The cocoon one, that's the problem. It's, that's that a, that's tough. Paid, yeah, that's the one I paid up on these two. I think I paid like 200 on those. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We'll move these then. So right here, we start talking numbers. We pull out Fantastic Four 66 and 67 just because we weren't going to be able to come to uh, an agreement on that because he had a lot of money invested into the books, which, you know, they're obviously really great books to have. We were just trying to get them at a lower price and, um, yeah, just not going to be able to, to do anything with that. Uh, keep in mind, we were just coming from the Old Bridge uh, comic book show, so we had already spent, you know, a couple bucks on comic books uh, just a couple hours ago. So... And we weren't expecting to come here, and little did we know that this purchase would, would far out uh, exceed anything that we bought at the comic book show. So it was really, really cool uh, that, that this just hit us. So that was 35, 120, 20, 140, and 110, said. So 250 plus, so that's like 2, 280, 285. Oh. I'm thinking we can barely pay for it, but it sounds like a fair deal. <laughs> hey, I try to. I try to make uh, it fair with everything. 280? Mm -hmm. I don't even know what's in some of those boxes. Like, <laughs> I just found Amazing <laughs> Fantasy number seven actually in this box down here. Really? Just just pulled it out, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I knew that I had it, and I just didn't know where the hell it was. Right. It's like, that's the problem is I have too much stuff where it's really, really accumulating. But I don't even know there was comments in there. Through, I was like, oh. That's all those uh, hip-hop covers. That's the problem with the stuff. So much stuff. Yeah. Basically, we started doing this during the pandemic because mm -hmm. it was all these coins. This entire section was trash and stuff like that. And this. Right. This entire case was pocket calculators. <laughs> they apparently were a thing. <laughs> so I, I told my uncle, I'm like, dude, Please let me just start selling the comic books out of here and like because I mean I had such cool stuff at that point I had first Doctor Strange I had first Doctor Doom and I'm like let me sell this shit up here mm -hmm. and he's like all right fine if you buy everything up here you can then we'll need space mm -hmm. or then you'll have space so yeah what I'll do is I will give you a call uh, you very much, yes, next time when I get like a big yeah let myself. us know and, and especially look if anybody ever brings in like that Hanna-Barbera stuff that or that Scooby-Doo stuff I mean, we're we're buyers on that. Like, we're like the only people in the area that'll buy that stuff. But yeah. we'll we'll buy we'll buy up if you find anything like that, I any have cartoon an stuff. Box somewhere in the back that's filled with it. Mm -hmm. So when I finally dig it out, yeah, I'll put it aside for you. Yeah. All right, guys. So here we go with the much anticipated uh, recap of my trip to Jersey Coin. Um, before I even start this video, let me give a huge shout out to Greg, who's a uh, subscriber and supporter of the channel. He's the guy that. I met at the last comic book show in Old Bridge, and he's the one that turned me on to his friend um, Mark, who owns a his, part of a, the uncle, his uncle's store in a Jersey Coin. So the way the store is set up, um, I, from the story that I gathered, Mark, who runs a comic book trading card and action figure, uh, you know, collection, he he runs all that that stuff out of the store, but it's his uncle's store where it was mostly kind of like. Uh, old coins and maybe jewelry and glassware and kind of stuff. So it looked like he he kind of rents it, maybe rents out a section of the store or just has his own little section where he can do his comic book business. I think that's awesome. And uh, be, to be honest, it was a little inspiring. Like I kind of wanted to do that too. But um, at the end of the day, really good comic. I mean, just the magnitude of stuff that he had. He just kept pulling books out. Um, 
so super cool to let us go through everything. So, I mean, huge thank you for that, Mark, uh, if you're watching this video. Also, he showed me so many pictures and videos of comics that he had come through the shop recently. And it's just like, oh my God, that that's unbelievable. So this was our trip to Jersey Coin. Um, I'll start off with the dollar stuff. And for me, some of this dollar stuff were some of the best buys we've had in, in a while. So I'll go through it. I know not everybody is, is uh, super interested in these uh, kind of richy rich comics and everything like that. But they're kind of our bread and butter here at CGL's New Jersey Collectibles. And we just, and look at, I mean, some of this stuff is just really good. So a lot of gold key TV show stuff. Got the invaders. This was really cool to see. It's in rough shape, but uh, hot stuff, creepy caves, number one. Super cool. I'm um, not sure what this is, but dad, I guess dad was feeling like Charlton Horror. Playful little Audrey, and you guys know for me, like this is some of my my favorite stuff here. The Marvel Hanna Barbera stuff, I love it. Uh, Man from Uncle, and this one's gonna be one of my favorite comics of the of the entire trip. Uh, Fifteen cent Hanna Barbera Gold Key Scooby Doo book for a buck. Really happy to find that. Here's some Charlton Flintstones. That's uh, number 20, number 49. More Richie Rich. Some Lost in Space. I'm not sure why Dad got this. Maybe he can explain that to me one day. I don't know if this got thrown in our pile accidentally, but... The Royal Canadian Mountain Police Classic Illustrated Special Issue. I don't know. I don't know if he wanted to buy that or not, but it is a dollar, so uh, I guess it doesn't hurt to have it. But sure. Here's another man from Uncle. Uh, Archie's TV Laugh Out. Here's some more kind of horror ghost stories. Magnus Robot Fighter. There's another man from Uncle. One of these might be a number one. Kind of in rough shape. It's got this centerfold here, but uh, the Living Mummy, Marvel Comics. I've had a couple of those issues recently. Huckleberry Hound. These are all kind of out of the bags and boards, so. Yeah, we were so we're going through I mean maybe maybe close to maybe 6 or 700 comics from from this store. And he brought out the, the this dollar box and we were just like, I mean, hey man, uh, he cuz he was kind of like, yeah, it's just the dollar box. You guys not might, might not be interested in any of this stuff. And we wanted to make it abundantly clear that not only are we interested, but we're probably we're probably going to be some of your top buyers on some of this stuff because <laughs> you guys know how this channel works. We we love our cartoon um, Hanna-Barbera comics. We know Dad loves Archies and stuff like that. That's not really my thing, but that's his thing. Um, and we, we both have an appreciation for the TV show comics, like like this one, like Lassie. Um, you know, we, we love stuff like this. And, and it's obvious that there's not that the market for this is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. But you know what? For us, we love books like this. So anybody that's got them, we're, we're buyers. So all those books for a dollar. Then as the negotiations continued... Uh, he ended up throwing all of these into the dollar pile as well. Now, these were originally all unmarked, so most of his stuff was priced. Um, I pulled out a, a number of books that were unmarked. They were not priced, so I guess he either hadn't gone through it yet, hadn't priced everything out yet, and he got a lot of stuff recently in a collection. Maybe he just didn't have time to go through it, um, but he threw all this stuff in the dollar pile as well, which I was really stoked um, about. Tomb of Dracula, 41. Um... If you guys remember in the previous video um, from the old bridge show, I I'm I'm buying Marvel horror. I love I love first of all I love horror in general, and um, the Marvel horror stuff has potential to to grow. So anything like that, I'm I'm a buyer. Um, we got Spider Woman number twenty. Uh, it does have this kind of huge uh, warping bend in it, but it's it's still a good book that presents well for a dollar. Can't beat that. 
Um, Spider Woman, 11. Uh, Spider Man versus Dracula, number one. Not that that's really worth anything, but super cool. Uh, Space Odyssey, one, kind of in rough shape, but uh, this is one that Dad wants in his collection. I believe Sp that looks like Jack Kirby art to me, so uh, that's super, super cool. And then this, um, I I'm not sure what this is. Somebody can maybe tell me. Um, this is Amazing Spider-Man 362. This is second appearance of Carnage. This is uh, first Carnage Venom cover together. Um, but what I'm unfamiliar with is the silver background. Is this like a second printing? Because I recently bought the first printing where it's like a lime green background, and that's a really cool book. And this one's really cool too. It just doesn't pop as well in the eyes. But um, this kind of this silver background, this grayish background, is that something like a second printing or something like that? Is this a later printing? Is this a is this a remake of, of the original comic? Uh, do let me know. I was really psyched to get all these books for a dollar. So that, that's how our negotiations were going. Um, so far, so good. All right, now let's get into the juicy stuff. All right, guys. So as the uh, as we started talking business, right away we came to the conclusion that there were some books that we weren't going to be able to agree on a price on. Um, what Dad and I did was we went through every single comic. Um, we took the dollar stuff, we kind of put it to the side, and we were just looking at the stuff that was kind of all the more expensive books, kind of everything that's five dollars and up. And um, we we came up with a number that we wanted to be at for everything. And um, our number was about three hundred dollars. That was not including the dollar stuff, but it was just including the really nice stack of books. Um, right away, I mean, we we did find an an FF sixty seven. That was in pretty good condition. It wasn't in great condition, but we wanted to throw it in there and, um, you know, come out with a strong offer. Um, but our offer that we were at for the book, we wanted to be somewhere between eighty and a hundred dollars for that book in as as uh, a solo book, just individually, eighty to a hundred. Um, he uh, Mark uh, told us right away that he he was about two hundred dollars into that book, along with the other Fantastic Four book that we bought. And so we just said, yeah, there's there's no way we're gonna we're not gonna come up close uh, enough to make an offer on that. Um, but I think other than that, I don't know if there's anything that we really just passed up on. Um, so I'll show you guys the whole stack here. We did find, and so the price. I guess we don't really know what the price is per book right now. Uh, we'll add it up at the end, but I can tell you what it was. It was two hundred and eighty dollars for everything. So when you take this whole stack. This whole stack of really nice books. This is bronze and silver stuff, plus all the dollar comics that we we just went through. Uh, it was two eighty for everything. So let us know how we did. I think we did pretty well. Uh, I think there's still some meat left on the bone for us, and we got some nice books. So there we go. Avengers number thirty. Really stoked uh, that we were able to buy some amazing Spider-Man today because. You know, like you go to shows and 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 it's just priced. It prices you out to the point where I'm like, you know, I can't, I can't buy uh, these kind of comics for these kind of prices. But we were able to find some nice ones today. Um, here we go, Fantastic Four 35, first appearance of uh, Dragon Man. I'm not sure if he has any uh, lasting power in in the in the MCU, but. Um, it's, it is a nice early Fantastic Four. Uh, did manage to find another amazing Spider-Man. 134, that's first appearance Tarantula. And it is, you know, it's, it's roughed up the whole side of the book. Maybe we can try to fold that back in, but some of it's just chipped away. It's an okay condition. Um, it's one of the first books I found, New Mutants. Um, here's a really nice one. Invincible Iron Man 101, nice Frankenstein cover. Uh, Cloak and Dagger, number one. Uh, I believe that's the first Cloak and Dagger. Uh, that's their first uh, comic book that they've had to themselves. Not their first appearances, but their own solo comic. Uh, Lois, uh, Superman's Girlfriend, Lois Lane. First appearance of Bizarro Flash. Some nice bronze Spider-Man stuff here. Got the Spider Slayer in 191. Uh, this one has a little bit of a little kind of blemish up here on the the top of the cover, but Marvel Sp uh, team up Spider Man and the Werewolf, love that. Another Marvel team up with the Frankenstein monster. Once again, a little you know it's a little rough. Got got some some folding going on in the bottom right corner here, but 
a nice Kingpin comic, uh, Spider-Man 163. Here's 162, that's an early Punisher appearance. Here's one of the better books that we ended up finding. Um, it's really nice, it's just in really nice condition. It does have some kind of, some spine chipping along the edge. Um, but Amazing Spider-Man 265, really awesome black suit cover, but it is the first appearance of Silver Sable. Now, I, I knew when I was picking this book up, I knew that it was a first appearance. I wasn't sure who it was or the value of the book, but just because it's it's a really nice Amazing Spider-Man book and it's, it's not chipped up or anything like that, uh, that's a really nice one to have. Uh, here's Spider-Man 176. Now, this is a key uh, appearance because... It's the first, like, it's the first new Green Goblin. I'm, the guy's name is uh, kind of slipping uh, right past my tongue. But that that is another nice book to have. This one I love. I love that we keep getting this book. <laughs> every time every time I get this book, I sell it, and then another one pops up. And we just keep, it just keeps, uh, the cycle just keeps going. He had it marked at 15. Uh, we obviously ended up getting it for less than that. But that's a nice book to have. Um, this one also in a little bit of rough shape, but uh, Thor 151, nice destroyer cover. And the last book of the day, uh, World's Finest 154. That's in really nice condition. Guys, I mean, how did we do? So to kind of take some of the, the nicer keys here. So we got one here. We got, uh, what else did we have? We had first tarantula. Ooh, don't fall. We had Fantastic Four. We had an early Silver Age uh, Spider-Man. Early Silver Age Thor. We got some really nice other books. Um, I mean, look, there's there's close to. I mean, there's probably close to about $150 in comics, maybe right there, maybe a little bit more. If there's, you know, obviously, I mean, the thing is with, with all these books, really with the exception of the Spider-Man 265, condition is an issue with all these books. That was definitely the one thing holding us back um, from buying more um, was condition, condition, condition. Um, but overall, I mean... Super stoked to be able to buy these books and really awesome that we, we were able to find this store. You know, once again, Greg, it's like the, the thousandth time I'm going to say it, but thank you for, thank you, thank you, thank you for turning us on. And Mark, thank you for having us. Thank you for letting us go through all these books. I mean, this was not a scheduled stop. So it was kind, it was definitely random on the fly. And unfortunately, we already spent so much money when we went to the Old Bridge uh, comic uh, convention that, uh, you know, we weren't prepared. We were not prepared for what we were about to see. And, and it was an amazing find. And, I mean, we will definitely be back in the near future. And, um, uh, guys, uh, I was also talking to the to the owner, Mark. I'm not sure if I was able to capture this conversation in the video. But um, he's hesitant about starting his own YouTube channel. And I told him, I mean, hey, man, you should definitely go for it. You got all the tools in the world to do it. You got your own storefront. You have amazing comics uh, already in your possession. And, you know, all you need to do is just hook up a camera and you got a laptop already. So, I mean, just just start filming, man. People love to see it. So what do you guys think? Would you guys support uh, Mark if he started a YouTube channel? Let him know down in the comments below if you want to see that. Um, overall, really amazing store, really amazing experience and really amazing people. I mean, you can't you can't really put a price on the experience that we had um, this past weekend. It was really awesome to, to see everybody, to meet everybody, to see a bunch of new people and, and make some new connections. And obviously it was always great. It's always great to find some really awesome comic books <laughs> on top of everything else. So that'll do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Uh, go, ch uh, check out Mark's store, um, Jersey coin. He doesn't do a lot of stuff online, although he's going to expand on that. But um, you know what? Doing going online doesn't do it justice. You you got to go to the store. You got to go digging th through everything yourself. Um, let them know who sent you if you do go. Um, and yeah, I will definitely see you guys in the next one. Um, upcoming, you know, we got um we got the Rawway Comic Con. Uh, I believe it's called Raw Con. Uh, coming up this weekend. And um, next weekend we're back at the flea market as sellers. So really interested for to see how we do there. Um, Dolph, if you're watching this video, you know, let me know if there's anything we can do as far as cleaning some of these books up. Um, if there's anything in here that you think is worth it, you know, we'll be in contact. 
and I hope to see you at the flea market uh, Saturday, uh, July 30th. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.